Hi friends, my name is Trish Roberts, you're watching Fancy Signals from Vega. So uh, today is Christmas Day in Australia and um, uh, some people find it problematic and other people uh, really enjoy it uh, and some people get very lonely and, and there are people who suicide. Um, it's just one of those things that uh, where everything shuts down and some people don't have much support and they don't have much in the way of family. You have to excuse my eyes today. Um, I, it's uh, extreme pollen count today and uh, I always react badly to extreme pollen counts. Um, lots of people do um, hay baling at this time too, which is usually why it's extreme in rural Tasmania. But anyway, um, I happen to be, by the way, um, someone who's not a, a big fan of Christmas, but then, you know, Christmas is for children often. But then I sort of think about all the, you know, it's a kind of a bit of a gluttonous time, particularly when there's a genocide happening in Yemen and there's lots of children dying of famine. One child every 10 minutes is dying of famine in Yemen. So it's kind of, um, I think of things like that on at times like this. And then of course I think about all the animals who are being, uh, who have been, there's been an ex um, extreme amount of animals, sentient animals who were tortured and killed um, so that uh, we could celebrate over their dismembered bodies, uh, celebrate peace on earth and um, goodwill to everybody over the dismembered bodies and decomposing flesh and secretions of of, um, you know, these sentient animals who love life just like we do and did not want to die. And so, um, you know, that's a sort of, particularly when you become vegan, you find uh, that sort of, the celebration of peace on earth or, or any celebration and, and, and uh, having dismembered bodies um, of animals and secretions and whatever, is a very strange thing and it's difficult to deal with. Um, lots of vegans tend to at this time, they might, they'll bring along some really yummy vegan dishes for people to, to eat. That's what, when we did attend Christmas celebrations, when we lived on the mainland um, and there were fam more family there, we would bring along uh, vegan dishes. And it was funny how other people who were not vegan would really, really enjoy those um, dishes. And in fact, uh, would sometimes knock, it, knock off what we made um, instead of eating the other things. So, um, but you know, that's something that vegans uh, need to be prepared for, you know, when you attend these things, uh, or at least let the host know that you're vegan if they're providing the food. You know, if the host is providing the food, uh, uh, then you can give them the heads up and they can um, manage to not, add, it's very simple not to add animal products to a lot of things. And there's a lot of desserts. You can make all kinds of things, cakes and, and puddings and all sorts of things. I make them uh, yummy and delicious and they're vegan. And no, so no animal had to be tortured and killed for those um, cakes and puddings and everything. And there's also wonderful, um, you know, sort of main meals you can make. Uh, you know, so, you know, that's something you can do to give people a heads up. Now in Australia, it's a bit late for people here who are vegan, but this is for those in the United States or wherever else who might um, be attending a um, Christmas celebration tomorrow. You know, you can, you can uh, sort of give people a heads up and bring your, bring your own food. But I'm sure you've already sussed that out if you're vegan. The, the point I really wanted to make about this issue is that if you're not vegan and you're watching this, please consider what, what you're actually, when you attend these events, any sort of event, whether it's um, any celebration, it, 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 we, if we really think about it, celebrating over these um, dismembered sentient beings who love life and they lived a really short but torturous life or maybe not so short like dairy cows, five years where they are repeatedly impregnated and they, their children are taken from them. And, uh, you know, and they grieve for days and the 
The male calves are killed because they are byproducts of the dairy industry. And eggs are the same. Oh, well, eggs, you know, the, the mother, uh, the, the hens live tortured lives, sometimes in tiny cages, and they cannot do anything that's normal, anything that's behaviorally normal, and it's incredibly stressful. Or they're in these huge warehouses where they have hardly any room to move, but they call it free range. That's, that's a big scam, these uh, so-called humane animal products. Um, if you look into it, you know, they're often, it's, 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 still, it's still torturous. Uh, they still end up being killed in the end. But even if it was the most heavenly place, uh, you know, it's still taking away the, their lives. It's still uh, non-consensual. It's still um, enslaving. And uh, that's something that we need to move away from as a species. We need to move away from that and uh, we re really need to embrace nonviolence and justice. So if we're, if we're also, um, you know, advocating for all kinds of uh, other human, of human rights issues, we need to consider when we're celebrating or even just every day, you know, the things, the things that we're eating and wearing on our bodies, they were sentient beings and they loved life just like we do, did and did not want to die. And we took away their lives for a few moments of palate pleasure because as I regularly say in my videos about veganism, uh, we don't need animal products at all to survive. We can easily meet all our nutrition requirements from plants and other non-animal sources. So the only reason that we're taking away the lives of one trillion plus land and aquatic animals is because we think they taste good or for habit, you know, pleasure, you know, basically habit, pleasure, convenience, and tradition. Um, but, and not only are we taking away their lives, but we're also destroying the planet that 99.99% of the planet's population who are non-human, it's their home too. So we're destroying the planet because animal agriculture is um, arguably the greatest driver of the climate crisis. Um, and I have pointed out in recent times the very, very lar the largest study to date, the largest research study to date of 119 countries and um, uh, 40,000 farms from farm to fork, 90% of all the, the different foods that we eat. There was great research done on that by um, a UK research team who were not vegan who were not put up to it by vegans or anything. It was just a, a science-based, uh, and it was in a science journal. And the results of that, the single biggest action one can take to address climate change, climate crisis, is to um, eat a plant-based diet. That means a diet free of dairy, eggs, um, meat, etc. And I, of course, include honey in that because um, that vegans don't eat animal products. And, um, and I, I'll explain in a little bit why I don't eat honey. Uh, but, you know, this is something that if we're going to be for nonviolence and if we're going to be for, um, you know, for justice, then we really have to start including the 99.9%. .9, uh, of the planet's population. To ignore that a huge amount of the planet's population, other fellow earthlings, is kind of, um, well, it's speciesist, but it's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? You know, to ignore just because they happen to be another species, just because they cannot stand up to our technology and to our um, domination, doesn't mean that we have the rights to do what we do to them. You know, because that's a sort of a, that's a human supremacist thing. And we do that, of course, to humans. You know, if we have, see vulnerable groups like indigenous groups, or we see people whom we want to invade their countries and take their resources, um, if we can get away with it, we do. You see, it's all connected. And that's why when I talk about um, anti-war and anti-imperialism, I usually mention um, 
veganism because it's all related. It's all the same mindset of otherization, otherizing a group um, and targeting a group and making them a target of violence. And we do that with non-human animals too. We've otherized them to the point where we think they are much lesser than we are, that they are stupid in quotes or just because they're not like us, therefore we can do whatever we want to them. See, see the comparison here? Um, so, you know, that mindset never stops um, the mindset we have toward non-human animals. It doesn't remain there. And I say that regularly because it's true. It really is. It, that mindset never stops at um, our attitudes towards non-human animals and eating, wearing and using them. It, al it always expands to other animals, uh, to other animals who, who are human animals and who happen to be a different different group to us, whether they're LGBTIQ, whether they're Muslims, whether they're um, black people, whether they're indigenous people, you know, the list goes on of the otherization and it depends on what is convenient at the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's sort of like very cynical really. Um, with other animals, we tend to fetishize certain species of animals um, arbitrarily because we happen to like the look of them or they're like us or whatever. Um, you know, like primates or dolphins or whales or whatever. Um, and it's completely arbitrary. Like they don't have any more sentience. You know, there's no levels of sentience. You're either self-aware self -aware and you, you know, you interact with the environment you, and so forth. You, you ha interact with others and you know there's no levels of sentience so um, just because um, whales or dolphins or primates or whatever are um, you know like us or you know that we recognize traits in them that are like us doesn't mean they're more important and that so so you know there there are there are fish you know they may not show any signs of emotion um, that uh, we can recognize. We don't know what's going on internally for them in their internal world. And because they have no recognizable traits that, that we kind of have in ourselves, uh, we think, well, they're, they're, they're just things. They're expendable. I often hear people saying, oh, I used to, um, you know, I, I'm, firstly, they'll say I'm vegetarian. Then they'll say, and I eat a little bit of fish. Well, that just makes you a non-vegan, really, because being vegetarian means you're eating, wearing, and using animals. Just you're eating dairy and eggs. You're wearing animal products on your body. You might be going to, um, you know, you might be horse riding and all sorts of things. Who knows? And you are um, eating a sentient animal too, fish. So you're just non-vegan. And vegetarianism is not veganism. They're nothing alike. And I wish that people. I wish that people would stop conflating the two because they're not. They're nothing alike. Um, so, you know, when people sort of say, "Oh, well, you know, I eat a bit of fish," as if fish are not sentient. I I feel like saying, "Well, what? So certain animals you eat, wear, and use. Animals you won't eat, wear, and use. And then other animals, just because they don't have recognizable traits and." or um, similar cognition skills or whatever, they're, even though they're sentient, w you want to eat them, you want to use them. That, that's not fair. You know, like, um, if that was the case, you know, there'd be humans who had disabilities that we could just exploit and enslave and kill and whatever. You see what I mean? It's like, you have to apply consistency. Um, so, you know, uh, it, it's something we need to think about. Aquatic animals are, are not um, lesser because we can't recognize behaviors in them which are like us. Whether they're like us or not, it doesn't matter. If they're sentient, that's all that matters. Sentience is all that matters. Now, I'm getting away from this celebration um, that people do at Christmas time, but um, it just makes me sad when I think about how many animals more animals than usual in the one trillion land and aquatic animals plus that are used, tortured and killed every year 
for trivial reasons of palate pleasure. That's, an, that's the usual thing. And it, at this time, at celebrations, uh, more animals are, um, you know, sort of uh, put through uh, torture and, and are killed for this uh, sort of a bit of a gluttonous festival, you know, a bit of a gluttonous uh, uh, celebration. Uh, and it's so unnecessary because a um, plant-based diet is delicious and as I said, we don't need these animal products at all to survive. So, um, you know, we're, we're doing all this violence, participating in all this violence and getting other people to kill animals and torture them for us simply because uh, we want a few moments of palate pleasure. And people often think that it's all about meat. Well, dairy is even worse than as, as a, a torturous kind of a activity. A consumption of dairy. It still involves tremendous violence. Um, and um, so, you know, and, and so do eggs. So, you know, it, like if you're vegetarian, please consider going vegan because it's, there's no point in, in being um, a vegetarian as far as I'm concerned. It still involves tremendous violence. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not addressing climate crisis at all. And I invite you to watch Cowspiracy, The Sustainability Secret. And also watch um, What the Health, the film, the documentary. And by the way, Eunice Wong, the pa um, partner of Chris Hedges, they both went vegan after watching Cowspiracy. Um, Chris Hedges is a Pulitzer, Pulitzer Prize recipient. Eunice Wong is a writer, um, an actor, a director. Um, she's an amazing person. She's written this book, What the Health? Uh, and uh, that goes along with the documentary. Uh, it's got lots of great information in it. It hasn't been released yet, but knowing how Eunice is so um, sort of, she's, she works on these things very hard. And I'm sure it will be a wonderful book. The film is very interesting, What the Health? And she wrote also, um, she helped write the, um, the sort of the companion book to Cowspiracy, Cowspiracy, The Sustainability Secret. So anyway, Eunice is, um, I, I invite you to check that book out when it comes out, What the Health. And of course, you can find lots of great nutrition information about a plant-based diet from a nutrition site, which is based on science called nutritionfacts.org. So I invite you to check that one out too. So anyway, um, the, the idea about um, celebrations, we need to, we need to um, reassess what we're doing on these days of celebrations, whether they be, uh, you know, Christmas or, um, or any, of, any of the other celebrations that are, that are happening during the year. Because, um, uh, you know, it, it makes no sense and it's not morally consistent to keep um, celebrating over the tortured bodies and secretions and products of, of uh, sentient animals who love life just like we do. It makes no sense really, does it? Um, you know, we can celebrate over, you know, sort of life, life-giving plants that um, you know, that, that are nutritious and belong in our bodies because of our biology. We're robust frugivores. I've said before, you know, if you look in the dentition of a, um, in, at the dentition of a dog uh, who is an om omnivore, it's very, very different to um, humans, very different dentition. Um, you know, our bodies, you know, these animal products are toxic to our bodies. Hundreds of thousands of people, millions in fact, throughout the world, millions and millions die of die of a direct result of consuming animal products uh, because they're cholesterol ridden, the, you know, the, pro, the animal protein is really toxic to our bodies. Um, there's plenty of protein in plants. If you see any vegan bodybuilders, it shows, you know, there's, you can get plenty of protein from plants. Um, so, uh, you know, this, the protein, animal protein is toxic for our intestines, for our bodies. Uh, cholesterol is, uh, promotes diabetes. It, it makes our muscles insulin resistant. 
So animal products actually are contributing greatly, and this is science-based, to the diabetic um, e epidemic, the diabetes epidemic in the world, because animal products, the cholesterol in them, um, actually makes our, um, our bodies, uh, our muscles, it makes them insulin resistant. That's something you won't hear from the Diabetes Association, but it's a scientific fact. So, um, anyway, uh, this is probably, I'm, I'm probably sort of meandering off, which I tend to do. But um, I hope that you'll join me uh, next, whatever celebration in the future, join me um, in a, a, more, a much more peaceful celebration, uh, a, an inclusive celebration, and let's, let's um, respect the other sentient animals who are by far the, the, the much greater um, population of this planet. And, and let's stop enslaving animals and domesticating them so that we can use them as things. It's kind of nuts, really, you know, to be doing that, particularly at this stage when animal agriculture is destroying the planet. It's arguably the greatest, um, the greatest driver of cli the climate chaos climate crisis so um, there are so many reasons to be vegan so many reasons that it's kind of a, a really sort of out there thing if if we're denying uh, the benefits of being vegan to not only other animals and ourselves but to the planet uh, to deny the science is just sort of um, really you're it's a willful ignorance if people are still pretending like animal agriculture isn't destroying the planet and isn't the greatest one of the arguably the greatest driver to this climate crisis which looks like it's going to end our species and most other species so isn't it time we started to be honest with ourselves and stop finding excuses stop finding excuses that are so poor that can be easily debunked all of them and then and just embrace nonviolence and justice and go vegan it's really really it's not difficult it's not elitist it's elitist to continue eating animal products because it's destroying the planet it's it's contributing greatly to world hunger and it's also killing you know hundreds of billions of animals it's elitist to keep eating animal products and wearing animal products and using animals. So let's stop making up these excuses that it's not healthy, that's, that's bunk. Let, let's stop making these excuses. Uh, let's stop making excuses that animal agriculture isn't a great driver of climate change. The science is there. You know, it, it's, at this point it's indisputable, irrefutable. So let's stop pretending and because we, th we don't want to make that change. You know, that's what it's all about, all these excuses, is because we don't, we don't want to make that change. We want to point to capitalism as the issue. We want to point to corporations. We want to point to fracking. We want to point to, um, you know, we, we want to blame external causes. Have you heard that Tolstoy um, quote? Everybody wants to change the world, but nobody wants to change themselves. So we have to, we have to change, we, you and me. If we want a nonviolent and just world, we, you and I have to change and go vegan. If we want to seriously address climate change, climate, the climate crisis, which is lead, going to lead to our extinction, then we have to do something, you and I. And that means we can start by going vegan. We can, we can do other things, that's something we don't need permission from banks or corporations or government. We can do that right now. You can finish watching this video. Check out howtogovegan.org. And start right there. We can, you can start right today, right now. What a great time to start just before 2019 and if you internalize the ethical position which is what veganism is it's not a diet or whatever veganism is an ethical position if you internalize that ethical position 
you will be vegan for the rest of your life. I was watching Ellen DeGeneres um, just recently. I don't normally watch that show, but uh, I was watching a uh, special of Ellen DeGeneres and then she said, well, I was vegan for eight years and, and now I'm not vegan. She said, now I'm not vegan. Um, I eat a bit of fish and, uh, and I, I eat eggs from um, some, some hen who uh, isn't enslaved. Well, that, sorry, that is enslavement, whether you're being really, really nice to them or not. You're using their products um, that are theirs and, and actually hens do have attachment to eggs. It's their eggs, whether they're fertilized or not. There's a whole um, uh, blog, a few blog posts I can put in uh, this information section about eggs, backyard eggs and what's wrong with them. And it's still just, it's assuming that these products of these other animals are ours. But anyway, so Ellen DeGeneres is talking about how she used to be vegan and now she's not. Well, I'd argue she was never vegan because um, there's no such thing as an ex-vegan if you've actually internalized the ethical position. And so I could see that coming and I think she was always having a little bit of this and a little bit of that um, animal products. So she was never really vegan because if you've internalized the ethical position, it wouldn't matter if you were the only person in the room that was vegan and there were no animal pro there were, sorry, you were surrounded by animal products and there was nothing vegan to eat, you wouldn't start eating animal products. It's just something that vegans don't do. You'd rather go hungry at an event if you didn't happen to bring your own stuff or have something to munch on. You'd rather go hungry than eat animal products. Um, because you've internalized the ethical position and these products represent violence. They represent the lives of other sentient animals. And just like I wouldn't um, eat humans, it, for the same reasons I'm not a cannibal, as a friend said one time, as the same reason I'm not a cannibal, that's what the same reasons apply to why I don't eat other animals, uh, non-human animals. I was just going to talk about the celebration aspect of it but uh, to really explain why we shouldn't be eating animal products and why we should celebrate with uh, all the many many species of plants instead of the four species of animals that we tend to focus on and how sad that is um, celebrating with all these wonderful plant products plants um, and and the wonderful many varied dishes you can make is just such a much better idea for a celebration of nonviolence and peace and any celebration. Anyway, so thanks so much for watching. Please check out howtogovegan.org. It's my podcast. Um, it has lots of information. Uh, you can listen to it anytime. Uh, so howtogovegan.org. It's a comprehensive vegan resource podcast. My name is Trish Roberts. You're watching Faint Signals from Vega. If I don't talk to you before um, New Year's, have a wonderful 2019. May it be everything that you hope it to be. May there be peace in the world. May there one day be a vegan planet. Um, and all, um, may all, anyone who is wishing good wishes for, for the people, for other animals and the planet, may all those wishes be fulfilled if they're, if they're actually beneficial for us, for us all. Because that's what it should be. Everything that we do should really be about consideration of uh, the other sentient animals on the planet and also the planet itself. If we started, if everybody started doing that, wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be amazing to live on a planet like that? So, so let's try and each do that in our own lives. I have a long way to go, but I'm trying and I hope that you'll join me. So, um, have a wonderful uh, celebration or, or if you're not celebrating and you have no family, I send you lots of love and I hope that you do something really good for yourself. Think about and do something for the uh, children in Yemen if you can. Make a donation to a reputable charity um, and also promote anti-war and anti-imperialism because that's at the core of all these terrible things that are happening in the world, the um, refugee crisis, the refugees, and um, and the violence. A lot of it, you know, a lot of it is caused by imperialism and the wars that come from that. Okay, so uh, thanks so much for watching. My name is Trish Roberts. You're watching Faint Signals from Vega. Till next time. Bye for now.